Well, the Florida legislature has approved a bill banning camping and sleeping in public areas statewide. The governor has indicated he will sign the bill into law. The bill aims to prevent Florida's homeless population from sleeping in parks, on sidewalks, under bridges, and other locations. It authorizes local governments to set up camps for the unhoused, providing security, restrooms, running water, and that would bar the use of drugs or alcohol in the camps. The camps must also not affect nearby property values. Supporters say the bill will help eliminate the problem of homeless people living on public property and in the parks. They also argue it will be easier to provide local services to the homeless if they're in one location. Critics say the measure does little to address the underlying causes of homelessness, and they also fear the law will put stress on local government budgets and staff. Patrick, we have 30,000 people on any given day who are homeless, unhoused here in Florida. Is this the solution? This just adds to the problem. Um, you know, we don't need any more regulation of what you can't do with them. We need to really figure out what we can do. And so uh, I'm in a part of town, our office, where uh, I deal with, you know, seven or eight homeless people on our property throughout the day. Uh, we've had people defecate on our property. We've had people set up camps be on, on, on vacant property next to us. You know, when you say you can't camp in the park, that doesn't make the person go. It just means he's not going to go to some private piece of property and hang out there. And so, um, you know, in some cases, having them on some public property is actually the best thing that you can do in a bad situation. Perhaps there's uh, water they can get there, electricity to charge their phones, and things like that. So this adds a set of regulation that just means it, it ties government's hands even more. There's no solutions here. Um, and, and it's just, it's kind of horrible that this is how we even want to talk about homelessness. So uh, one of the questions I have is, will these people be arrested if they're caught sleeping outside in a public place? Does that mean that they go to jail if they refuse to go to the camp? Well, in Tampa, uh, um, sometimes we arrest, sometimes we take them to uh, I, um, Tampa Hope, which means they check you in there, and if you break the rules, you get put outside the gate, and then you're up on my property uh, three blocks away. Um, so. Um, like I said, it provides no solution, no clarity to any of the situation. Tom, the Tampa Bay Times had a story this week about the uh, camp that was created in Pinellas County, and some of the people inside the camp said this was a better alternative than sleeping outdoors where they might be attacked or, or have their stuff robbed from them. What, what do you make of this as a solution? Does it, does it help reduce homelessness here in Florida? No, uh, it, it will, but it may shine a light. I think the legislation was well-intentioned, and I think it, it could ultimately shine a light on this problem and lead to some more innovative solutions, perhaps some funding. Uh, down the road. What it really does is creates a cause of action for citizens to sue the government in the event that they ignore the problem. Um, and, you know, that, that I'm not a big fan of more litigation, uh, frankly, but, uh, but like I say, this may, th this may highlight the issue, elevate it, and, and lead to some solutions down the road. Jeff, you look at policy solutions mm -hmm. as part of part of your job, part of your new job. So, what is the solution to homelessness? What 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 does your? Well, it's a complicated issue that involves because a, a predominant portion of your of your homeless population have mental health issues and utilizing drugs as kind of a, a backdoor medication for their own mental health problems. And so, what I think this bill is, you know, I, I think may, whatever the intention was, the outcome is going to be that. You know, these cities are now going to have to set up camps, but we're going to have plenty of people get kicked out of those camps, and they have no place to go. The jails start filling up. Their state has not provided the cities and counties money, so this is really an unfunded mandate uh, in many ways to these cities and counties that they're going to have to deal with this now. And there, you know, nobody kind of said, well, what happens next, and followed the natural progression of that question. I think when you get to the end of that, you realize people are still going to be living on the streets. Mm -hmm. Even the city is not going to be able to do that. Either that, or the jails are going to be full and you're going to be hearing from the sheriffs that they need to expand their jails. Well, at that point, Maya, about unfunded mandate, you've got the police have to do more under this. The cities have to come up with a way to fund the camps. You've got to staff the camps. Who pays for all this? That's a great question. And I think in addition to the unfunded mandate piece, what blows my mind is when we talk about the Republican Party who are in the supermajority in both chambers um, who love limited government are now, again, 
seeing, giving another example of them uh, pushing back on home rule. And so how can counties and cities who best know their communities and know how th that they need to handle this problem, how are we providing them and giving them ample you know, support to make these decisions? And I think that this is a, a huge problem. I think that we're going to see this uh, to the point that Senator Brandis made earlier, that this is going to be a problem of criminalization. It's going to be overcrowding in our jails. And we also, we need to, to do something about this. I don't think this is the way to get it done. Rob, I just want to add something. I don't think this leads to more camps that are regulated. I think what it leads to is, is government fencing off more public places so that they don't get sued. So you're going to look at fencing underneath the interstate so FDOT doesn't get sued. You're going to be looking at fences around parks so they can lock it up at night and make sure nobody goes in there and hangs out. And so I don't think it creates a situation where we're going to do anything positive. I think you're just going to see government trying to cover its, yeah. it, itself by, by making sure nobody is staying on a public site in the middle of the night. And that just means we're going to have more security and more fencing. I think the half-life of this is a, a, an experiment that's going to last two years and then they're going to undo it or quietly undo it yeah. um, because it, they're just not going to put the resources necessary to make this a real policy. And DCF, right, is a huge partner in this who already has a ton of pressure and not enough resources to do the job and the function that they're already responsible to do. And the idea that this bill is saying that DCF is now going to be able to come into these camps and provide services goes back to the unfunded mandate piece. We have so much agreement here. You guys should be in Tallahassee well, all together. And, and if, if local governments conclude this is an unfunded mandate, you may see more litigation before this is over. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right.